Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Frankie, Stevie, and Craigie. I'm never going to sort of say that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with us, uh, boys, we talked a lot oh, about no. the uh, the game. Obviously, on the show, one thing we didn't really touch on because we recorded straight after was Pep Guardiola coming out and saying that he thought his team were excellent for the opening 20 minutes. Uh, do you agree with that, Frank? Mm, I don't. Uh, well, I guess we didn't see the same game. Um, I didn't see something fantastic from Manchester City all the way, uh, and, uh, and especially the first 20 minutes. I think uh, um, I didn't see anything from the first uh, 20 minutes except a Lyon team very well uh, positioned, and that's it. But Manchester City didn't show something special, uh, and I don't agree with that. Craig, you can't believe that, can he? Yeah, but I think we're twisting it. What do you mean? Well, I saw the clip, and he clearly said uh, he played a back three to try and cover the holes that he knows is there. And I think when he said he thought they were excellent to start with, I thought he meant excellent defensively uh, before they capitulated. So I think that's what he meant. He also said, he also said uh, during that that they didn't offer as much going forward because of the change of shape of the team. And he said, he, so So I, I think he sort of covered that. And I, I, I think we're trying to twist this here because I thought it was quite clear what he said. <laughs> Did you sneeze, sneeze, Stevie? <laughs> Could help uh, What do you think, Stevie? Are we twisting this? Well, actually, I've got another take on this. Because as a coach, when you lose a goal after, let's say it was 20 minutes and one second, you're going to say, well, you know what? Until we lost the goal, I thought we were great. So, uh, <laughs> he's, what do you think the guy's going to say? As far as he's concerned, they started well. Okay. I mean, so what? So they should. The way the game started did not surprise any of us whatsoever. Leon, we're going to sit tight. And Man City, we're going to have the ball. And that's it. Okay, let's get to the tweets then. Is this, the high, is this high time football club should realise that possession football is a thing of the past and you cannot dominate the game by dominating the ball, Stevie? Well, hold on a second. How does that... Listen, that would make sense. If you're, if you're that good with the ball, then it makes sense. I would throw in that... <laughs> I would throw in that, you know, it, it's kind of like trying to... It's like trying to put a team together of 11 Messi's. It wouldn't work. You know, you need different types. Uh, and I don't think uh, Pep gets that. I think right now, if he if he could, he would love to have somebody like Puel, who maybe wasn't the greatest with the ball or... The, or, or technically the best, mm. but he could defend and he got everybody around him going. So, listen, if you can keep the ball from fun and don't give it to the opposition, then you're never going to get hurt. But realistically, that's not what happens. And so that means you need people that can defend when you lose the ball. And uh, Man City don't have any of those. What's this nonsense? I, I, lost, I lost what Stevie said there because my connection went on the caught the end of it. But what? I'll tell you what I said, Craig. I was saying that I bet he, I bet he, if he could, he would love to have somebody like Pew all playing for him at the back. Instead well, of him bringing in to Felix Stones who can pass the ball, but we know they can't defend. Go and get yourself somebody like Pew all. So I, I don't get these tweets. I really don't get it because the Champions League is difficult to win. We know that. It's an elite competition. You make mistakes, you go out. You know you got to have a possession with a purpose, and that's what generally Man City have always had, and Liverpool, and the Barcelonas, and Bayern Munich, if you watch them, uh, you know, just take Barcelona apart the other day. But but let's just hold our horses here, because up until Arsenal knocked them out of the FA Cup semi-final, again, balls over the top, defensive issues, they'd won eight out of the last nine domestic competitions, you know. So, we... We, we've seen a team in Real Madrid desperate to win La Liga after dominating Europe. So winning your league is important. We've seen how important it is to Liverpool after 30 years to be back on top of the tree in England. So let's hold our horses on smashing Guardiola left, right and centre about his team and his possession because they didn't play particularly well on this occasion. Stevie, would you still say Liverpool are the best team in the world, given how Bayern Munich have been playing and demolishing teams <laughs> effortlessly? Well, Dan, if there was a game tomorrow between Liverpool and Bayern, I would back Bayern. Right. So they're the best team in the world. 
Mind you, Liverpool haven't played for three weeks. So there you go. <laughs> what do you think, Frank? Hard to say. I want to. I want to see them. Uh, uh, playing against each other. Uh, I will put Bayern ahead of everybody else. I mean, since I saw them, you know, giving a lesson of football uh, to my former team in the first half in the first leg against Chelsea, I said to everybody that they were the favourites and they are um, showing to the world that they, in any compartment, compartment, they are the best in the world. Uh, 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 to the tweet that we had before uh, about uh, position of the ball and domination, I mean, they dominate the game by going uh, forward, not keeping the ball just for the sake of it, just because you just want to make, I don't know, five or six hundred passes. They get the ball, they dominate because they press high and because they want to score a goal, not to think about scoring maybe a goal at some point. That's the difference. And I, I like the teams who play vertically. Liverpool showed the way, Bayern Munich is just uh, showing that's the real way. I think it's hard to I think it's hard to judge things like this, Dan, because uh, clearly some personnel have changed at Bayern, including the coach. But didn't Liverpool take them apart in the Champions League last year? Mm. Uh, ab absolutely pulled them from pillar to post. And Bayern have improved, but then you, so did Liverpool improve because they, they had 99 points. They won the league so early that they, they they were on their they had the slippers on and were on their holidays. So it, it's a difficult, you know, you can't judge Liverpool in the last three or four weeks of the season because the job was done. It was done and dusted. And so it, it really would be hard to... If both these sides were firing in all cylinders, uh, like Liverpool were, you know, midway through the season when they just cut themselves loose, it, it's just too difficult to say one's better than the other. Stevie, have you ever missed a chance like the Sterling miss on such a big stage? And if you have, how did it affect you and your confidence as a football player? Uh, not as blatant as that. You know, I had a chance. I had a chance in the World Cup in '86, but I saw it late, and it was coming across quickly. I didn't quite connect, and I was, I was over it pretty much as soon as the game was done. So, a couple of beers. I did, on the other hand, nearly have one of those moments <laughs> against Newcastle. My uh, second goal, I was about 12 inches from the line, and and you actually asked me on the. On the show, Dan, how Sterling missed his, and I said it was because the ball was already in the, air, in the net mm. and he lost concentration. And the reason I know that is because I did it, but I got away with it. It just cr and I don't think it even hit the back of the net. That's how lucky I was that it actually went in. Craig, you ever had a miss hey, like Dan. that? No, never missed one uh, yeah, that bad, to be quite frank. I mean, it just, Stevie said it on the show, he saw the goalkeeper was beaten, the, the empty net was there, and he'd already scored it. Right, it's a simple. It's not a difficult technique, right? He's only got to get good contact on it, and and he and don't lean back. Uh, but it's interesting. I've just gone back to talking about Liverpool when they won the league and were in the slippers. There was a man turned up uh, at the golf course uh, last week, uh, and was going to play in these slippers. <laughs> I wonder how long you get involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd have been fun. Steve, how did you forget to change your shoes? Well, the truth is, I took my wife's car and she said she would put my stuff in the back of the car the night before, and she did. She put my golf clubs and my trolley in, but she forgot to put the shoes in, and I didn't check. And so I turned up, I got out of the car, got my clubs, shut the door, locked the door, took three paces and looked down and realised that I had my slippers on. Beautiful. So, for, <laughs> was, so fortunately, like, fortunately, Dan, he comes like, walking uh, down the car. He comes walking down the car park and goes, "No, well, he was getting the uh, he was getting the clubs out of the car, out of the trunk, and I heard them. All I heard from about fifty yards away was, "Oh no!" <laughs> and I went, "He's forgot his juice. It was worse." He says, "I've only got my slippers now. Bearing in mind he's a size eleven, so they are big old feet." But just at that, one of the lads came out of their condo, Russ. So I shouted, because obviously I know most of them, so I shouted to Russ, hey, Russ, what size feet are you? He said, a size 12. I said, perfect, go and get your shoes. So he brought, he brought up two pairs wow. of uh, his lovely shoes, one a little bit more modern than the others, for Stevie to select. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Did you buy him a drink afterwards, Stevie, to say thank you? 
Oh, the bar's closed, isn't it? Not even. No, that's, that's no here's a classic, closed. Dan. Here's a yeah. classic. So, Scott, we finish his round and he says, yeah. He says, what does, uh, sorry, Frank, he says, what does Rush use for golf balls? And I said, well, he's a bit of a higher handicapper. So he says, uh, I said, he'll take anything. He'll just hit anything, Ross. He said, I'll give him a few golf balls from giving me shoes. I said, good idea. So he goes in the car and he's in his trunk again and he gets his this sleeve of golf balls out and he goes, <laughs> he goes, hey, they're Callaway Chrome Soft, aren't they? They're the good ones. I went, yeah. He went, no, he's not getting any golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank, so, have, you had a, have you had a big miss like that from Sterling? Oh, we're still uh, on this? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, once against uh, Australia, we played the Confederation Cup in 2001. I was uh, playing for France and, uh, and um, there was a cross and I was like not even a yard from the, from the net and I had to put a header in the net and it was quite simple and, and as TV said, I thought it was already in and I just missed the header and it went just outside the, the goal and I say, and, and I couldn't sleep at night, overnight, because I say, how it's possible to miss that? <laughs> How can you miss that? It's not possible. It's you harder did. to put it away than in. Whatever. You didn't did sleep. It. it was the Confederations Cup. What the hell's that? Yeah, because I was captain and I was red carded right straight after. So it was a horrible oh, day. Lovely, Frank. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But we won the Confederation Cup. I played the semi final and the final and we won it. Oh, well so done. It, it was the, well done. That the, must be right. The third that title. must be on your mantelpiece. Yeah. What is that? No, you have third, three titles. You have three titles that you can win with the national team. It's the uh, the World Cup, the European uh, Championship, and the Confederation Cup. And we won it. Well, what's three, it? Tell me what the Confederation Cup is again. Remind me. It's uh, the winner of the uh, of your uh, every continent in the world who are, who are competing a year before uh, another World Cup. So there was Brazil. Uh, nonsense, Australia, friendly nonsense. France yes. and why nonsense? Oh, yes. Because you never played it and you, you criticize it. No, because we didn't. Scotland you never played win it. Confederations Cup. Why are we bother playing Confederations Cup? I mean, get out of here. Be because, well, there's only two teams, aren't Because you don't, you don't deserve to play it. It's why you are criticizing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Frank, the so Next question. The so-called Farmers League has two teams in the Champions League semi-finals. Is it time to take the French League seriously? <laughs> That's a good question, by the way. That would be interesting to see how the French journalists, who are always hammering the, the Ligue 1, are going to think about it. But no, I think it's... Um, um, I don't know, it's uh, circumstances and, uh, and, and it makes that, uh, that it's possible to see this, this season uh, two, two clubs in the, the semi-final. But it doesn't reflect on anything the, the, the quality of the League One. Uh, we lose so many players every year because we have fantastic young players, but we lose them for foreign clubs. And, uh, and it's impossible, almost impossible to, to have uh, the quality of the uh, Liga or the Premier League or the Bundesliga. But we fight hard um, and we don't have the same rights as well. The TV rights are very below what we can find in the, in the Premier League. So money-wise, quality-wise is different. So it's, it's absolutely spectacular to see two clubs like that in the semi-final. But like, like last year when we saw uh, Ajax, it's, mm. uh, it's a miracle. But it doesn't reflect the, 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 the quality of the, of the championship. Final question, Stevie, what has been the most surprising result in the Champions League so far for you? Oh, come on. 8-2, Bayern <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> wow, but don't get any more surprising than that. That's it, boys. Should have been Thank 12, you. by the way. I said, could it... Go on, Steve. Could have been 12-4, oh, or 8-2. Yeah. Okay, good. Right, thank you very right. much for that. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Manchester United taking on Sevilla, bringing you all the talking points from that game. Until then, goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.